Now to do a review for book one of Furious. <laughs> What do you mean you can tell that I did this on the same day? First of all, don't judge me. I am not doing it on the same day. Just because my curls are exactly the same way and every curly girl knows that your curls will never be the same as it was the day before, doesn't mean that I'm doing the same review or a different review in the same day and just change my top. I don't appreciate these accusations. <sighs> Those accusations make me by Brian J. L. Glass. Uh, illustrator is Victor Santos. I just like the way how that sounds. <laughs> uh -huh. Like coming down the aisle, our newest illustrator, Victor Santos, and he comes out with Furious Mags. Like, what? But anyways, let's talk about Furious. So Brian J. L. Glass is someone else that uh, I've actually interviewed, I believe, twice already. Um, so <laughs> Uh, there's a lot that goes on here, and I think it's a fun, 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 fun uh, comic book because this is actually about a superhero who becomes, a, actually it's a superstar that becomes a superhero, and if you can picture every crazy meltdown, like the Britney Spears meltdown, the Lindsay Lohan, the Paris Hilton, like just put all that into like one person, and then picture them becoming a superstar, a uh, superstar, and then they turn to a superhero. I'll give you a minute. Uh, so that would be Cadence Lark in this, which actually means falling songbird, right? So Cadence here. Whoo, when you say celebrity trash, I mean celebrity trash. I mean, we already have Dwayne Jeffries on Bookface and tweeted her, um, writing all kinds of things about them. Oh my God, I'm kidding. But just to give you an idea what the story is about. So you open up this lovely, beautiful comic, right? And we learn that Cadence has a bit of a temper. Okay, she's just, just spazzing out in her apartment, you know, like most celebrities do. And it opens up with her having to do a car. Sorry, I'm trying to get the picture. The ring light's totally killing it. Uh, she's chasing this mother uh, who has her son in the car. And she's trying to figure out, how do I, how do I stop this? Uh, I know it's a quarantine, I'm supposed to keep my hands out of my face, but the truth is I've already been indoors and then my hands are clean, so please don't judge me. And besides, people generally touch their faces about 50 to 70 times per hour um, without washing their hands, so, you know. Ah! Let me, hold on, let me, I'll come right back. Give me a second, there's something in my eye. Ooh, much better. But anyway, um, so Cadence is sort of just dealing with having superpowers and she doesn't know how to handle it and you're starting to learn in the first book that she is a celebrity because she doesn't particularly like this particular celebrity and she's constantly referring to herself as in first person as well as third person so she's battling a lot she's got more personalities than Batman and what's happening with Cadence is she's dealing with this car chase and she's trying to remember basic things that she used to disregard other people for because for her she was famous she was pompous she's like ah! I don't need any y'all. She's just so full of herself because she's got money and she's got fame. But the problem with fame is that fame becomes like a drug, right? So, and I think that's very relatable, especially for artists, especially for actors and singers. Um, because like, I'm an actress. I don't want to be famous famous, but what I do want is recognition for the skills that I have provided in entertainment. I want to be a successful actress. I don't need to be on the graceful covers of everything. I just want to be a successful actress and enjoy the work that I've done, mostly predominantly action films, because that's generally what I'm interested in mostly. Um, I can do dramas. I just don't have like the interest in it unless the script is like, I don't know. The script's gotta be right if I'm gonna do drama. Um, but anyways, and no romances. I can't fake being in love. That's hard. So, <laughs> uh, you can ask my exes. Um, someone didn't think that was funny. But <laughs> but anyways, um, she's trying to even think of simple things like physics. Like she's genuinely having to stop. Like how do I stop the car? Like she's just flying by. How do I stop the car and then like not harm anyone? I mean, it's gotta be. Oh, I never listened to him in class. And she's going through all these motions and. And that's just the beginning of it and then it sort of flashes to what her everyday life is and she's in her home she's sort of giving you the narrative that she is Cadence Lark and you're understanding like okay so what does Cadence have to do with what we just saw in the first few scenes and she goes to like the supermarket uh, some guys like hitting on her and she goes complete Cadence Lark on him because he's like hey that stuff I've seen you before you know like he's he genuinely is being sweet about it but uh, her comeback, which I thought <laughs> it was messed up, but it was funny. And I was like, 
I gotta try that sometime. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But she goes, no, I'm not good with these things. And he's like, not good with what? Like, as in relationships, as in love. And she's like, fragile things. And even when she walks away, she's like, oh, that was so mean. And I was like, yeah, that's a real D move, man. You are a real a-hole. Wow. I wonder if that's what I sound like to guys. So, because <laughs> I give warnings, but nobody ever listens to me. Like, no, you're not a jerk. You're loving. And I am. I'm loving. I'm giving. And I'm very affectionate. But when I say get away from me, I mean it. So, <laughs> uh, I don't do no back talk, figure out, read between the lines. That I am a blunt woman. I am more blunt than a deadly weapon. <laughs> and so, she's dealing with the public. She's hiding herself. She doesn't really want people to know she's Cadence Lark. But she also wants to redeem herself by being the superhero. Now, I haven't figured out in the first book whether she got her powers through a freak accident, if a radioactive spider bit her, or perhaps a radioactive bird or something. Uh, I don't know, she finds like a green ring that like picks her like, I choose you. Um, I don't know, she's like a band of five rings, you know, and perhaps they're all out there to save Captain Planet. <laughs> you should have watched my last episode. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the point is she does not want to be that involved with the public. So now she's kind of got her outfit down um, because she even makes a joke like, you know, basically because of the internet, you can just about find anything that would make it into a crime fighting outfit. So she thinks she's doing the right thing. And she's doing what I think people would do because there are real life vigilantes who do run out and stuff like that and I don't know quite frankly how they dress I've never actually looked it up that much but I am aware of the fact that there are real vigilantes out there and she's doing what people uh, perceive superheroes to be you know they get their spandex they get their outfit and you know she, this chick's got a banging body so she's got like this great outfit so she ends up going into a comic book store right because so she just wants to buy something and one of the comic people like oh my god furious and she hates that name because she's like uh no uh, <clears throat> that is uh not my name uh, I am not called furious and she's like my name is beacon you know like the beacon of light in your life and everyone's like right you got an anger issues we're calling you furious and she hates that name and there are some people in the comic book store who are like oh my god it's her get your kids run and she's getting like both ends of it and which i thought was kind of cool because a lot of times when you're reading comics you you see like the citizens are always for them unless they're like trying to make it into the plot storyline um you know like all oh, day the citizens hate the the hero it's never really just casually shown as much as it is in this first book. Usually when they're introducing a hero, um, there's a lot of confusion or there's a lot of like, only the police don't like them and most of the citizens love them. But with here, it was very split down the middle, which is what I actually liked. And the owner, he's half and half about it. He's like, ah, oh, I don't want you breaking stuff. This is my story. Get out. And he says what the, re what the real reason is. It's not because he dislikes her, it's because he doesn't want her breaking his shit. So I'm just like, all right, that's pretty, uh, pretty honest. Appreciate that. So. What ends up happening, he, she tells him, like, look, I'm not going to do anything in here. She's like, I'm just walking around. And he's like, fine. So she's walking around, and then she hears on the radio, like, there's something happening on the highway. And she's like, I got to get out of here. So she, like, runs out. She does her, like, you know, superhero run, her superhero poses, you know, like, all those kind of things. Or, like, ah! Like, she has her thing. And... So she runs out and now she sees what's going on and she's watching the car. Now the police who are pursuing this car don't realize what's actually happening and this mother has completely snapped. Uh, she's about to lose custody of her kid. Her baby's in the back screaming and crying and she sort of decides, well, if I can't have you, uh, your father's not gonna be allowed to have you and so will anyone else. They will never be allowed to have you. And you can see how dark where that's actually going. And she's trying to figure out how to stop the car or get up to the car without making sure that the baby does not get harmed. And eventually she does figure it out. And then when she gets home, she ends up finding out that there was something else that was happening somewhere else in town and someone dies. And it starts eating her up alive because to her, she's just like, I want to do these good deeds because I want to make up for the horrible human being I was as a superstar. And it doesn't work out the way that she wants it to be. So she thinks because she failed saving somebody else's life, she's basically a failure at being a superhero and she's never really going to truly redeem herself um, as a human being. And one of the things that you do find out about her as she's at the comic book shop is people are asking her questions um, because they've heard so much about um, 
well, they weren't really asking her questions. Uh, she happens to see Cadence Lark, and they don't know that it's her underneath the mask, and they start trash talking Cadence, and they start talking like, oh, didn't she laugh when her dad died? Like, didn't this happen? Like, oh, she's such a horrible person. And all they do is trash talk her, not even realizing she's the person that they're talking to. And you can see it's eating her up inside, but she's trying to be a strong human being, but she's made a lot of mistakes. And she's trying to make a name for herself, which is why she keeps choosing Beacon, because she wants to be the beacon of light of everything, and she redeems herself as a human being from Cadence Lark, the, fall, uh, the falling songbird. And instead, she ends up just being furious. So, um, the Cadence Lark aspect of her, her anger, is actually what motivates her and makes her a good superhero. Because... When she starts to lose her temper, that's kind of when she starts to think right because she puts her all into everything. And it's her being human. She's flawed. She's extremely flawed. And she's trying to redeem herself for the bad, horrible history of things that she's ever done, caused, uh, things she just did for publicity. And she even talks about how fame is a drug because once you get a little bit, people want a little bit more. And then you want a little bit more. And then you want a little bit more. It becomes like a drug where you need it that you don't even care how you get the publicity. You're just willing to do it. And I think everyone at some point can come across some celebrity that they're like, okay, you lost all the marbles in your head. Like, you know, like, you know, um, and it, it gets pretty intense. And when I spoke to uh, Brian J. Allglass, he was telling me that a lot of the melt celebrity meltdowns that were happening like in the early 2000s from Britney to Lindsay Lohan, Paris Hilton, um, he said a lot of those uh, public meltdowns actually assisted him with writing this book because he wanted to combine all of those personalities rolled into one. Um, so there are five books. I am going to do a review in each book. I mean, we're quarantined. Where else are we going to go? So that's a great reason why I think you should download this book and buy it or just have it shipped out. So if you're the kind of person who likes to smell the pages and stuff and like feel up the books then i then order it <laughs> but um it's definitely a fun book i think it's definitely worth it i have all sorry about that my canon camera got furious at me but anyways uh <laughs> make sure you guys check out the book you can find brian J. L. glass uh just google him that is b-r-y-a-n i'm gonna put the writing somewhere around over here um but he's also produced with dark horse comics i am also doing podcasts uh, on Anchor, so if you look up Cadma, uh -huh, I don't know where my name is, where I'm putting it, but what else, uh, C-A-D-M-A, uh, but you'll find me also on TikTok, Instagram, I am on everything that is Cadma, why? Because this is Cadmania, and this is going to be your, your Cadmaniac Mondays. Hope you enjoyed this quarantine review. Make sure you give uh, a thumbs up if you like it. If you read the book, tell me what you thought about the first book. Did you read it to the second? Do you have all five books? What's going on? What are your expectations for uh, for Cadence? Um, especially because she has more personalities than Batman and Joker put together. So, um, tell me what you think of the book. Tell me what you think of my review. Do you think I should go more into depth? Because I could mold this a lot better if I just get some feedback. Uh, and I mean feedback like in a comment section. I do appreciate the feedback I get in person, which I do. Is is. Oh, you can probably see that. Yeah. So I have a pimple there, and I'm not even gonna lie to you. So yes, I have a pimple there. That's toothpaste. Don't judge me. Uh, but um, I need feedback from you guys. I want to know what you guys think of my reviews. Uh, I don't really get much feedback from people in the comments, but I get more feedback in person where people are like, hey, I watch your show, and I like this episode and that episode, which it's not that I'm shy about. I appreciate that. Uh, but it's easier to mold my shows if I see it in the comments because I can go under the video and go, oh, that's what I should improve on. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for watching and make sure you hit that button down there to subscribe. Why? Because you're quarantined. There's nothing else you should do. And even when we're not quarantined, you still need something to watch because by then, You've fallen in love with us. Get fed, guys. Bye.